Good day, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the Philly Old Head Review. Today, our guest is a young lady that I met some years ago. She is now a councilwoman elect in the borough of Darby, outside of Philadelphia, uh, Miss Lucille Pratt. I'll let her give a brief introduction of her of herself, and then we'll talk a little bit about her journey uh, through life to where she is now. Miss Pratt. Good morning, all. My name is Lucille Pratt. Um, I've been a resident of Darby Borough for well over 25 years. I'm a block captain here, um, volunteer with the Red Cross for many years. I feed and clothe the homeless population through my church ministry, as well as the community. Um, I'm a widow, proud mother of four grown children, 12 grands and one great grand. And I'm just out here trying to be the voice for the people in Darby Borough. All right, all right. Now, I met you some years ago when you worked for the state in a past life. <laughs> right. And uh, I've always known you to be one of those people who were down to earth and helpful. Uh, and, you know, talk about a little bit about your journey to politics. What, what made you wanna, you know, get into the political sphere? Well, I've been a judge of elections. Well, I started out just working on the polls, signing the uh, people in and things like that. Mm -hmm. Then I was asked to go over and help at, out at another location. Didn't know that I was getting pulled into what I was getting pulled in. And I became the judge of elections in that area. And I did that for a number of years. It was stressful, but I handled it well mm -hmm. with a good team. Um, and I don't know, one day I didn't have my, my eye on putting my name in a political arena per se. Um, I was asked by my beautiful mayor Helen Thomas, if I wanted to run for the school board. And initially I told her no. I told her no a few times. <laughs> so anything I do, I pray about it. And I talk to different people to get, you know, some, um, you know, feedback. Right. So as I looked at it, I'm thinking, Lord, Maybe you're calling me to do this because of my law enforcement background and I could be beneficial in trying to bring programs and things for these young people that are out on the street and, you know, some not finding their way. Right. So I told her I'll do it. I believe about a week or two later, I got a call and... The person asked me, uh, how about me, how about, what do I think about running for borough council? Well, I was honored because that's my area where I've lived and raised my children for well over 25 years. The people here know me. They know what I stand for. They know I have a passion to help people and I care about where I live. Right. So that is uh, commendable. Um, how has the dynamics of Darby Borough changed over the years? You know, um, uh, you spent a lot of time in Philadelphia, so you can kind of compare it, compare the two, how, you know, as far as the demographics, dynamics, and so forth and so on. How, how has it changed over the years until where it is now? Oh, it's changed a lot. I just think with the many people who have moved in and out, um, Darby is still a beautiful place to live. I'm going to say that. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be worse, but we have our challenges. We have a good police department that um, 
pretty much they do their job well. And they have the reputation that, you know, people even from Philly would say, oh, I'm not coming to Darby. They don't play. So, but um, I've seen the neighborhood itself change. When I moved here, I was married. um, And my husband is since then deceased. Um, But when we moved here, um, we're on the south side of Darby. So back then, you know, they considered that more, um, it was more white people and homeowners and just over the years, you know, that has really changed. It's not, there's still homeowners here, but I would say not as many that a lot of people who had the homes has since moved out, you know, um, and we've had some challenges. Has the, has the crime rate uh, been uh, reflective of, uh, say the, the larger city? um has it has it increased uh the same or is it kind of just uh would you look at it as more you know uh, vagrancy type situations uh drug uses what what type of challenges have you had to deal with there over the years well um as you say yes the uh drug use with drugs bring uh guns ups the crime level i feel um, so we've had, you know, several shootings here that back 25 years ago, you didn't hear about that. Mm-hmm. And not that it's happening every day, but one day is one day too many. Right. Um, I believe they, our police department works hard and um, solving these problems. And I always say we get our man or our woman. <laughs> You don't have a lot of unsolved, they don't have as many unsolved uh, crimes there as they do in the big city, huh? No, nowhere near. Like I said, one is one too many, but we've had, we've had shootings. We've had people come in and think that they're going to sell drugs <laughs> in our town. And it may last for a while, but I don't think it's going to last long. So they kind of try to keep a um, lid on it, you know. Even like, you know, when the police are called, you know, they come in full force and people know that. Right. So. How, how did your time as a, a parole agent prep you for uh, your, your, your uh, how would you say, your duties now or the ones that are forthcoming? How, how did it prep you? Well, I feel like it allowed me um, to experience a lot of things, crime that I've never seen growing up in Delaware County because I never lived in Philadelphia. So um, just interacting with the offenders that I had, and I even learned along the way that you can't put everybody in the same uh, scenario. You can't stereotype you know, that um, I've come across people who spent time in prison for things that they didn't, you know, commit. So I feel like with that, it allows me to listen to people more, even in my town. And I don't try to judge people as, even if they do have a criminal past, I reassure them that, you know, um, they can change, things can change. And that, you know, one day that they can be beneficial to society as well, you know. So I've learned that on the criminal aspect, you know, just talking and listening to offenders and uh, getting to know the person in front of you, not by reading the file. Right. Now, you're not a very uh, uh, tall person, you know, respectfully speaking. Um, And you never carried... If I remember correctly, you never carried a weapon as a parole agent, right? Yes. Okay. So we know that that position had a lot of challenges. And um, even when they, when the parole board changed to arming their officers, you respectfully declined to, to carry. So, you know, Did you find it um, challenging? And how did you use your 
psychology, psychological skills in order to, you know, maintain, you know, um, I don't want to say superiority, but, you know, keeping your offenders in check. Well, for one, because I talk to them and I treat people with respect and I don't try to make them feel less. So um, they looked at me like, you know, Miss Pratt, and I've heard some things, you know, she could be nice, but she's going to do her job. And I've even had parolees tell their judge how I try to, you know, redirect them and help them. But you had to learn that everybody you can't help, you can't save. But they knew when I spoke, they knew, they respected me. And um, in the beginning, cause I covered the Badlands that they called back in the day. Mm -hmm. And it's like third in Indiana. Right. And as many times I was fearful, but you know, I always pray in anything that I do. And I was told from day one that when you treat them with respect, you know, they'll look out for you when you're out in the street. And doing that job, I found that to be true. So many times, I didn't even go out with a partner. Many times I was out in the street, morning, afternoon, evening, a Saturday, a Sunday, and I wasn't fearful to go do my job. Now, to the, the, nowadays, things have surely um, changed in today's mm -hmm. climate. Um, how do you see um, parole, law enforcement, um, and their role in uh, what's happening today? Are you are you familiar with any of, of the policies um, that has affected the, the large city of Philadelphia and how that may have spilled over into the smaller uh, suburbs like Yaton, Kowloon, Darby, Upper Darby, and, and the like? Um, well, I still have many uh, friends and family who are employees of the parole board. Um, a lot, as we know, have changed, you know, in policies and procedures. Um, as far as I know, a lot of it is more field work instead of being in the office, which even being in Darby Borough, I, I don't come across many parole agents in this area. So I'm not saying they're not doing their job, but, you know, I just don't see them in the community like that. Right. Uh, do you think that's a that's an issue that, that needs to be addressed? I, I don't know. <laughs> I would think so. Because come out and get to know the community and know where your offenders are residing and who they're communicating with and uh, what part can they take in trying to keep the community safe. Um, I attended a meeting last night. It was in West Philly at my church, the Church of Christian Compassion. And it was just the district attorney and other officials trying to come up with, uh, they wanted to hear people's solutions. Because a lot of people to this crime, you know, uptick in the crime, a lot of people, they talk about it, but people don't really want to get involved or don't get involved unless it's personally uh, affecting them or their family. Right. And, and, and we know that's a mistake uh, because if you're, if you're quiet now, if you don't speak up now, more than likely it may come to your front door, unfortunately. Exactly. Unfortunately. Now, um, I, I believe you're still in, uh, contact with um, some of the people who are with the uh, uh, community, the community outreach or community, um, uh, what's it called? Um, the Citizen Advisory Committee. Citizen Advisory Committee and, um, you know, in these type of um, organizations. Uh, what, what are they doing? I mean, is it just that they're making sure that the police are doing their jobs, but what are they doing as far as outreach within the community to try to make things or help things to be safer for the people that's living in the community? Well, as far as the uh, committee, I was reached, I was contacted by a, a former co-worker, Reggie 
Haynes, he's the co-chair of that committee. And the committee is really just getting up and running. So we really haven't done it. We ha we've had one meeting last week. So we really haven't done anything or put our ideals together as of yet. But I think um, going back, I remember I was on that committee a number of years ago with um, Jim Newton. He was the deputy district director back in our time. And um, I thought it was real beneficial, you know, whereas though many people in the community and different officials, law enforcement included, came together and, you know, tried to come up with different solutions to uh, curb the crime and keep, um, better, um, how can you say, better... Um, Relations? Yes, 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 in that sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. What, what is the... I really don't understand what the next person, the next official may do it, you know, in their capacity. A lot of people don't even know what parole agents, you know, do or supposed to do. Well, I, I saw one, uh, I think, um, last summer down North Philly, 15th Street. And, um, you know, we know what they look like. We know what they drive. And I believe he just sat in the car for like 40 minutes. <laughs> I'm like, what is he doing? Is he is he doing a stakeout? Is he, you know, he just sat in the car, you know, playing with his paperwork. Uh, I never saw him get out the car and I never saw him ever come back ever again. So I was saying, what is, what is the new... Uh, parole board, what are they doing? You know, um, I, I heard it was the kinder, gentler <laughs> parole board, you know, and um, unfortunately, this crime is not gentle, <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I just saw, unfortunately, I saw a video just from uh, this past weekend where. An individual was shot right in the middle of the street and they stole his motorcycle in front of hundreds of people. And it, I just find it amazing that people wow. just go about their daily business like, you know, this is uh, the purge. It's not, yes. And like, it's a normal thing. So um, I don't know if it's a, it's a generational gap with this. Uh, people don't want to say anything people don't want to be involved you know like you said until it hits their door um i think that's one of the things uh that always uh flummoxed me and i i, I didn't understand but be that as it may what type of uh plans does darby burrow have to keep the youth busy over the summer months and, uh, you know, try to keep crime down? Well, I can only speak from some of what I know because I'm not officially right in the seat until you get sworn in. You still have to go through November the 2nd and then you get sworn in in uh, January. But from what I would like to see, well, I know they do have like the basketball clinics. Um, that was another thing uh, this Saturday uh, was hosted here in Darby Borough. And I thought it was an awesome thing. Shout out to the uh, Lou's Barbershop on Main Street. And it was where they allowed, you know, the kids and their parents to come and sign them up for the summer league, trying to keep them busy and off the streets. And it was a lot of children you know, that attended um, some adults, but it was a lot of children and different activities down there. So I know that's one of the things. We do have a nice recreation center and um, that's pretty much open to where the children do have a place to come. Um, but, you know, you still need more, you know. I believe like we need um, some more playgrounds for the younger kids. And then when you get into the older ones, we need to, we can't keep talking about it, the negative, uh, as it was stated in the meeting that I attended last night as well. They need resources, you know, like some training. Uh, mm -hmm. Even if somebody came up with um, 
one gentleman spoke about wanting to train the young folks on like carpentry, uh, you know, electrical work, plumbing, things like that they can use in their life. We want them to be productive. We want them to work. We want the crime to go down, go away. But really, as adults, we have to be, we can't just talk about it. We have to be part of the solution. And you got to meet these young folks where they're at. So that's what I do a lot. I engage with a lot of young people. And I try and let them feel comfortable enough to talk. And even if they did things that weren't pleasing or that wasn't law abiding, you know, I still let them know that they have a chance. You know, and oh, if you're on parole, if you're a convicted felon, you can still vote, you know, because a lot of that information, is, it wasn't given out to people for a very long time. And they figure, you know, oh, I got a record. I ain't voting. It, ain't, it doesn't make any difference, you know, da, da, da. So uh, I just try to engage with mainly the young folks as I see them, whether I know them, you know, or not, you know, I get to know them. So do you guys um, interact with... Uh the other boroughs, surrounding boroughs that are, you know, around Darby? As for myself, I do. I can't really speak for anyone else, but that would be something that, you know, I've talked about to other uh, candidates, you know, who were recently elected as well. I would love to see, you know, on the county, I say the uh, local, the county, and the state level. We should be engaging with one another to try to come up with different um, positive solutions and not just always negative talking down about the, you know, the, the young, oh, they're doing this, they're not doing that, oh, they ain't working. Well, did you give them a job? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so I would like to see us, you know, once I do officially get in that office, is come together, you know, build these relations with Kyle Wynn, with uh, Sharon Hill, with Darby Township, with Fallcroft, with Darby and Yaden, you know, and stop acting like crime is not in, in these other areas as well. Well, it would it would seem like it would make sense because, I mean, you can go around the corner and you're in Yaden, you know, down the street and you're in dark. I mean, you know, so it would make sense because people traverse those uh, blocks, you know, consistently and often that uh, there will be some cooperation between the boroughs and townships. I mean, that, that just seemed like common sense to me, but, you know, who am I? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, uh, I, I mean, I, I would think, you know, and, and plus on top of that, if, if there is a, a, a police call, I know typically that the other police boroughs may, you know, cross the street and things like that without you know, without any problem. Right. So it just makes sense that um, there is some uh, cooperation. I mean, I, I don't know much about the political sphere beyond, you know, titles, but um, I don't know. Maybe that's something that uh, can be encouraged between the um, different townships and things like that. Mm -hmm. And I know, you know, the different police departments, they communicate with each other on different issues that happen amongst themselves. Um, up, so up, if the police could come together, then the officials in each town should be able to come together because it shouldn't always just be on a negative that the police are called and they have to do their job. But what is uh, the council people and the commissioners and things in each, you know, one of these areas doing to try to, you know, bring the people together with some, you know, positive solutions and working, you know, maybe if they see us working together, then, you know, it will trickle down. Right. I mean, um, historically speaking, people move to the the uh, suburbs in order to get away from crime. But as time has gone on, that has bled into the, you know, um, the suburbs. So, mm -hmm. you know, job readiness, financial literacy, literacy skills, um, uh, uh, different uh, t uh, tech training um, and things like that should probably put, be put in the budgets in order to keep people um, benefiting the boroughs and keeping them busy, you know, uh, and, and keeping the money within, 
within the community in, in order to build and, and update and upgrade what's going on out there. Because uh, obviously, you know, the homes are getting older. Mm -hmm. A lot of them need to be retrofitted or uh, updated. Um, and like I said, if you hire your own people and keep them busy, you know, so they don't have to go outside the city to get jobs, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that might be a smart thing to do. But, you know, again, I don't know much about, about politics. It uses just some of the ideas I would think that would have a positive affect on the, uh, you know, the smaller boroughs and things like that. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because I am seeing about the uh, the properties, not all, but I've been seeing uh, properties that have been sitting vacant for a number of years, and uh, now people are actually making it look like something. So that would be a big plus as far as, you know, helping to uh, bring up the community. But people just have to care where they live as well. And like you said, um, the financial piece, um, I like to know, uh, really, as I heard in this uh, meeting last night as well, it's sad that a lot of these schools don't even offer, um, you know, like this job readiness. You know, everybody's not going to college. But if they're taught, like we were taught coming up, um, they will have a better uh, opportunity in getting a job. Then some of them just getting out with a diploma and still can't read or write a paragraph, you know, or getting out with a diploma, but they have no skills. So you want them to go work at these jobs that can't even help pay the bills that they have at the house. You know, they need, they need uh, to learn the wood uh, shops and the home economics and things like that. Something like that could carry them for a long time, you know, and can maybe they'll see, okay, well, I could further this education in this field or that field, but they're coming out with something as opposed to just the piece of paper. Well, that's, that's purposeful. And, um, you know, people like yourself um, has, has to recognize that even, even with trade training, um, we're moving into a different uh, dynamic now in automation. So computers and automation are the future. Um, biotech, as you, you know, you can see, these are the type of things that kids need to learn about, um, as well as finances. So mm -hmm. they can stay ahead of the curve and not saying that, uh, carpentry, plumbing still aren't relevant, but you definitely have to have, um, if you, if, if you want to have a, a superior workforce, you need to get into the automation, um, the, the computers and things of this nature in order to, you know, to, to, to compete with, say, like for Delaware County to compete with Montgomery County, mm -hmm. for example, that's what you need. That's what they need to get into, because we know that Delaware County as a county as a whole is one of the poorer counties surrounding Philadelphia. Um, it hasn't always been that way, but now it is. And when you compare it to, say, Montgomery County, which is one of the richer counties, right? You, know, you have to look at the differences, what's going on, what, what's, what's the workforce like, you know, mm -hmm. and these are the things that should be brought up in meetings and certain targeted areas when it comes to training the, the youth that uh, should be concentrated on. And it may be, I don't, you know, these are some of the things that uh, perhaps you thought about and maybe you can bring up in some council meetings later on. Um, and um, I don't know if they share information, the outgoing council members to the new council members, I would hope so, uh, mm -hmm. and, and, and still work together. Uh, mm -hmm. in order to benefit the, uh, you know, the, the, the home front there. But, you know, these are just some of the things that, you know, I think about on a daily basis, you know. Uh, so maybe you can take some notes and... <laughs> well, I am. You know, I'm a note taker. I got my pen. Look, got my pen. <laughs> I see. <laughs> you know, I always carry your little notepad, pen. So, yeah, I mean, those type of things that uh, can aid, 
you know, um, you got solar energy, all of these things right. that that uh, could benefit and, and, and you know, job wise and benefit the uh, county and uh, help help bring in uh, tax dollars and, and 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 better jobs and keeping you know improving homes and all of that uh, and make it a make it a place where people would come and spend some money. Just like they go to the mall in, in Montgomery County, you can have something in okay. Delaware County, spending that money in order to bring the county some, you know, some some fun. So mm-hmm. um, uh, anything, you know, what type, is there a message out there that you want to send to the youth as you embark on your, you know, your new journey when you, you know, before you get sworn in in November? Uh, to the youth, I just like to say is make good choices. And even when you mess up, get up and try it again. Um, don't never give up. Always pray, but never give up. I hope they hear you. Yeah. I really, I really hope they do. I mean, another thing I think we need is youth leaders. <laughs> they, exactly. you know, they don't listen to they don't listen to their elders anymore. So you need youth leaders and have yeah. that and have that balance so maybe that's something else you you guys can think about is uh establishing a youth they used to have a youth aid panel and maybe like you said that's something that they could bring back yeah mm-hmm. it's, it's needed it's needed you need youth who, are, who will be responsible leaders mm-hmm. and who can communicate with their uh their comrades you know um, the people of their age group that they'll respect and and you know unfortunately kids don't as a whole you know it's been a lack of respect for their elders parents grandparents and, and the like yeah you know, morality has declined over the last few decades um so in, and along with that people just they don't listen. They think, you know, they think they know it all. And that's, it's a lot of reasons for that. Um, Again, I think some of it is purposeful. Um, But that doesn't mean we have to lay down and roll over. And give up. Right. You know, so um, keep talking to those youth, maybe, you know, get, get together with some leaders there. Um, I, I'm finding that in a lot of these small towns across Amer- America, they're starting to elect younger mayors, younger council members, and they're exactly. just getting out of their teens and, and, and mm-hmm. early 20s and putting them, putting them in a few. 22 years old run for the mayor. Right. He's been successful, but I, and I believe even with him that he can be used. You know, he's eager. He got, you know, He's willing to learn, and we ain't seen the last of him. Right, right. And, mm-hmm. you know, call him up. Listen, come learn some of these, these things. Uh, maybe, uh, I don't know how AIDS work and things like that, but, you know, uh, bring him into meetings and, 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 and ask him to share some of his ideas, his youthful ideas, things that can help to improve uh uh, things for the people of his age groups to keep mm-hmm. them out of trouble and, and, and crime and stuff like that um, out of the negative things and be more positive uh, power brokers to to improve the environment that uh, and the community that's, you know, within and surrounding uh, and, and hopefully bleed into the city itself. So that's something that, you know, you can do. Keep the youth, keep them t- you know, connected to your hip. You know what I mean? Don't just tell them to go go do your own thing. Exactly. You know, I got one who think I, I'm too old and I don't know what I'm talking about. He don't want to be around. So, you know, mm-hmm. hopefully, hopefully, you know, hopefully he learns before it's too late. You we know? just keep trying. That's our job. Yeah, so I appreciate you coming on and uh, if, you, if you ever want to come back on and share some things and promote you know I'm here, uh, 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 and we'll 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 contact you again after you get sworn in in November. All right. And check on you. Yeah, I was going. 
<laughs> making sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, holding your word to your people. Oh, listen, that's my model. I'm going to be a voice for the people, not the title, but a voice for the people. I will listen to the people. I'm going to do my best. I make no promises, but I will be a voice for the people of Darby Borough in the third ward. Now, what happens What happens when the people don't know what they're talking about? <laughs> oh, well, they don't know. They don't know. But if it's something I can educate them on, because I don't know everything either, you know, and if even if I don't know the answer or, you know, I'm going to go, you know, seek it out for them. So if they don't know, you know, I'll tell them in a nice way, no, it's not like that, you know, and I'll try and educate them as much as I can. All right now. All right now. Miss Lucille Pratt. Uh, council member elect for Darby Borough, the third ward. Yes. We wish you the best and uh, you. we will stay in touch. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Thank you for coming to another episode of the Philly Old Head Review. Uh, oh, by the way, like and subscribe this video. And if you have any questions for Ms. Pratt, uh, Write them below and we'll get them over to her so she can uh, possibly come back to uh, answer them. Uh, we appreciate her time on this episode of Philly Old Head Review. And until next time, thank you.